All right, I've got a copy of the Aeneid right here. This reading is for John. Shout out to John for supporting us on Patreon, our first subscriber. Yay, John. Um, okay, so are there any specific instructions I'm supposed to follow to do this? Or do I just like flip through? Um, there's kind of like two ways to do it. You could either like draw from a bunch of stones that have all the all the like the ver- verse numbers written on mm-hmm. them. Um, but uh, the other way is to just like flip through the pages, find the one that calls to you to answer the question. Or do the divination. Okay. So I have done um, bibliomancy before. So I'm just going to do the thing. Um, John said he doesn't have any specific questions he wants me to do. So I'm just going like to do general. General. Like, what's up? Just what, 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 what do the space ghosts have to say to me today? Yeah. That's okay. what we're going to do. Okay. Um, I'm going to go. Oh, these are words I cannot pronounce. <laughs> Are they, um, are they all in Latin or just some of them? Um, they're names, so I hope that our listeners are forgiving. It's fine. I got this. Um, saved from the Greeks, will there never be any walls for Troy again? No Samois or Xanthus. The rivers Hector loved. Come with me. Burn these vessels of ill omen. Let me tell you I have been given warnings in a dream. I saw Cassandra. So, uh, how do you spell the words you couldn't pronounce? Um, S I M O I S. Um, uh, it was a river uh, of the Trojan plain. It's like the name of a river. And then I think Xanthus is also one because it it says the rivers Hector loved. So referring to those. Oh, and the Xanthus. Yes. The Xanthus is, yeah, also a river. Um, two immortal horses, uh, like one of the immortal horses was also named Xanthus. And Poseidon was its father. Poseidon fathered an immortal horse. Uh, of course. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think... It's kind of interesting. Um, Come with me, burn these vessels of ill omen. Um, It's kind of like, let's get rid of the things that carry bad news. Like, things that only, like, have negative connotations. It's time to let go of those, like, to release them. Um, Let me tell you, I've been given warnings in a dream. I saw Cassandra. Uh, If you don't know who Cassandra is, she's um, in... I don't know. She's a seer, um, and she is cursed with no one ever believing her when mm. she sees when she predicts the future. I have a tattoo of Cassandra on my thigh, actually. Um, okay, so it's kind of interesting because it's like you need to listen to what your guides are telling you. Like you know what's happening. You're having dreams. You're having visions of these things, um, and you need to. You know what you need to do. You know what you need to get rid of. You know the things that are causing um, issues and like vexing you. So it's time to let go of those things and really listen to your intuition. Because where I'm seeing, um, I've been given warnings in a dream. That can also just be communication with your guides. So. Um, yeah, it's time to kind of let go of the things that you know aren't serving you and let mm. yourself, like, have um, better opportunities. I want to do another one. Okay. Well, in the Aeneid, I, I'm pretty sure that verse is from the part of the book where um, they arrive in Sicily slash Rome and they burn their ships uh, so that they are forced to build their kingdom there. Mm. It's like there's no turning back. Uh, kind of like I've been rewatching Full Metal Alchemist, <laughs> and I, I think because it was October third. Of like, course, it have, don't forget. I October know I got 3rd. forced into watching it with RJ, <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and yeah, they burn their house down uh, so that they know that they can't go back because they have nothing to go back to. It's a mm. lot like that. Damn. That's like, um, we were talking, RJ and I were talking about me being a professional psychic and that I constantly feel like if I could just be normal, like if I could just have a normal job, if I didn't have to be a psychic, my life would be so different. And we were talking about just like really making a run for it. Like either I'm going to be a psychic or I'm going to die. And it's that kind of idea of like burning down 
what you had to go back to. Like it's yeah. time to let go of the things that you had in the past. They're not they're not saving you there. They're not pacifying you even. They're just sitting there as like kind of this thing that you can't ever return to. So at a certain point you have to let go and just go for it. You just have to go forward and make it work or not. You that's what it is. Okay. So then the next passage I got also has names. So I hope I do them okay. The first one is Aeneas and Achates, A C H A T E a T E S, um, listening, brooded with downcast gaze and troubled speculation, prolonging bittered thoughts. But Venus gave them a sign from the bright heaven. A flash of thunder came from the cloudless sky, a blare of trumpets, and all the things suddenly shaken. They looked up swiftly again and again. They heard the roar and rumble. They saw arms redden in the clear of heaven. Listen to the thunder and cloud. So, John, you know what you're supposed to do even getting the call to go do the thing that you need to do. And it's just time to stop clinging on to the past and just do it. Just commit to the future that you have and stop trying to change the messages that you're getting. Stop trying to make sense of them. You know that they make sense. You already know what the thing is, and you're the one that isn't listening. Um, when we look at the trumpets, um, and I don't know, did they have trumpets like in that time period? Probably like the equivalent of a yeah, horn. like a horn. Okay, because it biblically, um, when... Gabriel blows the trumpets. He's bringing everyone home. So it's like the messenger of God, the mouthpiece of God is Archangel Gabriel. Um, and so when you look at the trumpets, that's um, in the tarot, the card of judgment is talking about this exact thing. And it has Archangel Gabriel blowing his trumpet. And the idea of judgment is that you're being called to a higher purpose that um, there's... Hmm? Aeneas is literally, that's the whole book. That's the thing is it's <laughs> him being like called to go do the thing. And it's like at this point when you're getting um, a flash of thunder from a cloudless sky and you hear blaring trumpets, like, listen, just listen to your stuff. Do the thing you're supposed to do. I'm getting chills. It's like, come on, John, get it together. Do your stuff and stop messing around. Stop like making excuses for it to not work. I could see why somebody would read this and be like, well, I'm probably going to be emperor. Uh, <laughs> right. Like, well, I mean, when you're like looking at it and it's it's a book about a guy who's supposed to be emperor when that's the thing. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that would be. And uh, the, the name you mentioned, uh, Achates, that is Aeneas's like best friend possibly intimate he's the stand-in basically for patroclus for like patroclus was for achilles okay uh where he's like they're really close friends maybe lovers okay but everyone in like greek and roman times had like same sex partners and different sex partners mm -hmm. and free love babies so yeah, yeah it's just them kind of responding to that um it's kind of interesting like the other thing i want to point out about this is um the first part so Listening, brooded with downcast gaze and troubled speculation, prolonging bitter thoughts. It's kind of like sitting in your own, like, gross goop in your brain, like depression <laughs> thoughts. Yeah. And it's like you have, like, literally Venus being like, hello, could you pay attention what, to what I'm telling you? I'm telling you what to do. You already know what to do. Stop, like, indulging in the bullshit in your brain. Stop feeding into, like, the depressive cycle. Stop doing that. And, like, wake up, answer the call. Um you know, I think the other thing that's interesting is that, and this I think is a message for all of us, that we need to, if you know and you're getting the nudges from the universe and you're feeling it and you know what you need to do, then you need to do that. It's not going to get better until you do the thing. So sometimes you just have to like pull the Band-Aid off and do what you need to do. Okay, John, I hope you liked your reading. It sounded really informative to me. Uh, I think it was a call-out post, and John's probably going to be pretty upset. Isn't all divination just a call-out post? If it isn't a call-out post, what do people pay me for? <laughs> <laughs> like, I am here to uh, call people on their bullshit and then ask them to do better. And so I do that.